Yeah, there. So hello everyone. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, chapter uh, 24 uh, on web scraping. Um, the chapter is uh, can be a bit long, but uh, but I think it's ultimately enjoyable. Uh, the there are a couple of learning objectives. One is to learn a bit of HTML and then use that bit of HTML to learn web scraping. So you need to know a bit about the structure of HTML and it is the consistency of the structure of HTML that allows you to uh, do this uh, web scraping. Let's see, yeah. So there are a couple of uh, curious features about the chapter is that uh, there are no exercises in this chapter. That's one. Uh, the second is that Unlike other chapters, I think here there's a lot of discussion about uh, some of the eth ethical implications of uh, using web scraping, uh, most especially when it comes to the ownership of, of data and um, and the damage it could deal. Uh, so I, I probably will not go into a lot of detail here because uh, we, we, we're living in different places and we have different uh, uh, laws regarding regarding the uh, how should I put it regarding whether or not uh, web scraping is something that would be acceptable and um, I think I, I would rather invite you to read section 24.2 uh, with respect to the details about uh, about the ethical implications. And I think it's a very informative um, section and uh, for each country, it would be very, very different. And uh, it's also it's also probably interesting if, if what kind of laws you're subject to, if let's say you're a citizen of one place and then you're scraping at a different location or so, stuff like that. So I think it could get complicated. Um, the other curious feature of the chapter is that uh, there, there is an external tool that they suggest that you would use uh, called the selector gadget. So I think this is a convenience. Uh, um, I think this is an app, an, an app or at least a way for you to, to be able to do web scra scraping a bit more efficiently. Um, and uh, this selector gadget is, uh, is discussed in one of the sections of the book. I'll also not talk about it as extensively. It's in section 24.5, okay? So it's a JavaScript bookmarklet, sorry. So that's the that's the thing that I wanted to point out. And then the other curious feature is that uh, it also talks about the limitations of, of scraping, of web scraping, especially for websites that have, uh, that are dynamic. So the websites are generated, they're not, completely text uh there the html source code doesn't have the the text but rather it's generated from somewhere else so mod, more modern very very modern websites have this uh have this feature in fact one of the examples in the in the in the text uh involves a dynamic website uh and i'll, I'll talk about that in a moment okay so those are the curious features of this chapter. And um, I think the basic thing to understand is really what HTML is. So the book talks about uh, what HTML stands for uh, and uh, the fact that it has a hierarchical structure and the structure, this hierarchical structure is composed of elements. And each element has a start tag, attributes, content, and an end and an end tag. Okay. And every element could have children, which are de themselves elements. And it's the consistency of the structure that, which enables one to do web scraping. So let me just uh, give you a sense of it. Um, one is this uh, Star Wars uh, data set. And let me just put it in the chat. Okay. So this is the link to the Star Wars uh, HTML file. Okay. And I think this was referenced or at least worked on in the chapter. Okay. Um, if, 
if you look at the HTML here, then there's really not much special here. But if you look under the cover, for example, this view page source, okay, you sort of like get a sense that it's really a big text file with uh, with all of these um, elements. And then you have a start tag, for example, this one here, you have a start tag, and then you have attributes, and then you have the content, and then the end tag. So start is this part, okay? This is the end tag, this is the content, and then these two are the attributes. One is the href, attribute and the the other one is the class uh attribute let me make that a bit bigger there so so that's essentially what what html files are really text files and these text files have uh tags in them uh and once you load it in a browser uh it gets formatted in a in a way that you would see like the one that you see here on on the screen now Okay. Um, ultimately, the idea is to get the data available in this file and then put it into a into a data frame. Okay. So, in one of the examples, for example, this for the Star Wars films, the idea is that you could get the names of the films, when they were released, who directed them, and then this uh, opening text. Okay, when when the, when a Star Wars movie when a Star Wars movie starts, okay. So, and then put them into a data frame. That's essentially one of the tasks that you see in the chapter, okay. And the idea is that this this chunk here and this chunk here actually are repetitive. Are you know you have a consistent structure. So if I and you could see it by. You know, you could highlight this part, and I think you could use inspect, okay, in the browser like Firefox or Chrome, and then you will see this part here. Okay, I'm not sure if I could make this a bit bigger. Yeah, I don't think so. So here, when you when you go through this inspector, okay, you could get a sense of where you are. Like for instance, this one. Some parts get highlighted, like this part div class equals crawl. That refers to this part. Okay, the 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 opening uh, text that that shows up in the in the start of the movie, and then you also see this part, the director. Okay, okay. so this part is one of the elements, and then it has a child here, which is this element called span okay which also has its own attributes and content and then you have the end tag okay so and if you if you look at a different uh movie like attack of the clones so you'll see that uh you'll see that you have this div class equals crawl here as well and they all refer to that uh uh crawling text at the beginning of the movie Okay. And you also notice that the title of the movie is tagged under H2. Here it's also tagged under H2. Release is tagged under P. Okay. So that there's this consistent structure that could allow you to convert whatever you see in in the source file into a data and convert it into a data frame, which you could ultimately use later on. Okay. So that's that's essentially the the key idea you know, that the uh, two key ideas one is that html has this hierarchical structure and then these elements it, this structure will have elements and these elements have a format and then these uh this structure sort of like is consistent uh has some sort of some form of consistency which allows you to do web scraping okay essentially that's the that's the thing that we exploit in order to create uh, a data frame. Uh, now, what are the commands that are used to extract uh, data from HTML? Uh, the, the key package is really the Arvis uh, package. Um, and I think they, they're making a pun here. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and there are a couple of things that the 
only a few commands that the that the book actually emphasizes. One is how to load the HTML file that you want to scrape first, and then how to extract the data through what they call uh, selectors. Okay, so essentially, what you want to do is to be able to select. So if I if I do inspect, the idea that like if if I want all of the crawl text, then I have to make sure that I point to the right uh right element. So this part, the div class equals crawl, that one is the one that I'm I have to target somehow so that I'll be able to extract the text uh from this HTML file. That's sort of like the idea. Okay. And um yeah, and the extraction of the data relies on these key commands. One is at the element level, how would you extract the relevant elements? And then if it, if it happens that what you need is part, is has an attribute uh, involved okay, or is directly linked to an attribute, you could also target that part. And you could also extract the relevant text from from the content okay so that's essentially the sort of like the, the the idea for this part okay and then if it happens that your data comes in the form of a table that is you know formatted as an html table then there's a con there's a very convenient command that will allow you to sort of like automatically import that table of course subject to its how this HTML table was designed and of course how the HTML table was created in the first place. Your mileage may vary with respect to what it would produce at the end of the day. Okay. So that's uh those are sort of like the key commands. Uh so what I'm what I'm going to do now is just to demonstrate uh through a couple of examples. Um yeah, throw a couple of examples. The Star Wars example is actually relatively relatively simple to to do. So I I think I'll leave that for you to to try for yourself. It's also part of the the book, uh the, and it's a good example for you to sink your teeth into. Um, but ultimately it was already pre structured in a very nice in a relatively nice way so that you don't see a lot of the hiccups so what i would do instead is to focus on those that have hiccups okay and then and then show you things along the way okay so one is one of the interesting examples here is in section 24.6 which is the imdb top film uh data set so you have the HTML file, and the idea is that you want to turn this into a data frame. Essentially, you have 250 rows, and then you have a column that has the rank of the movie. You have a column that has the name of the movie, the year in which, in which it was produced, uh, or it was released, sorry, it was released, and then the rating of the, of the movie, okay? So that... That's essentially the uh, the idea that they want you to, or this, the what you the target goal in mind, okay, is to turn this into a data frame that has two hundred fifty rows, uh, a column that has the rank, a column that has the the name of the movie, a column that has the year, and then a column that has the rating, okay. So, uh, from here you already could see um some issues like for instance this part would be the text that you need to extract but from this text you want to extract only one the number one for the rank or the number two for the rank and then the name of the movie should be separated and then the nine, 1994 should also be separated so definitely you're going to use a lot of these string manipulation uh uh tools from chapter 15 chapter 14 and chapter 15 to actually help you out with this, okay? And then you also need to recover 9.2, okay? Essentially, that's the uh, the plan uh, for doing the work, okay? Now, there are a couple of libraries to, packages to load, Tidyverse and Arvest, okay? Um, 
one thing that I want to emphasize right away is that the first few lines here, the first two lines of the code that you see for this uh for this example might not work for you. Okay. So uh it depends on your connection speed too. So if and here, what I did here was I left this part unevaluated so that you just, I just put put this as a remark that this is a bottleneck. And uh, let me just demonstrate to you. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to do harvest. And then there. Uh, I think it, mm, let's see. So it's taking a while. I'm curious. It looks like there's two separate like URLs in that. Is it supposed to be like that? Yeah, because uh, so I'll 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 talk about that in a moment. Thanks. So so here you see that you have this uh, timeout. Okay. And that happened to me a couple of times. It's extremely frustrating. Um so about the about Lydia's question, they, there seems to be two hyperlinks uh, to addresses here, but actually one, it, this is actually a cached or at least a stored file for what the IMDB page looked like around 2022, okay? So this place is called the Internet Archive. So let me just put it here. Oops, there. So that's the Internet Archive. And you basically you could look into what the top 250 movies would look like, that page would look like at different points in time. Okay? So what the book uses is, um, I think 2022, okay? So it's taking a bit long, okay? Yeah, so you could try this, and basically they have a way this way back machine. They 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 preserve what the page looked like, uh, at that particular point in time. And if you notice, the address, the address has this uh form that has the archive uh website, and then you have the uh what do you call this? You have the address that you that was uh, sort of like saved or you that where a snapshot was taken when a snapshot was taken so you would notice that see here february 23 there is a copy at these times okay and around 2022 one of these snapshots snapshots uh was used and if you look at the at the link at the bottom you, know, you would see web.archive.org slash web and then the date and then followed by the address uh, that you wanted to look for way back, okay? That's okay, where... all right. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yeah, so that's where it came from, okay? And um, you would notice that here, you, you run into this problem. I'm not sure if others will run into the same problem, but in case you do, okay, in case you do, um, this might be specific to, sorry. Yeah, you, you should download the HTML file locally, okay? And uh, there's a, I had to look it up from in Stack Overflow. So this this was a question from long a long time back. <clears throat> and the idea is that you should just download the, the file from the URL using this download that file command and then save it into a, a file name of your choice Okay, you could feel free to remove this quiet equals true if you wanted to see what goes on. Okay, um, and then and then afterwards, once you scraped it, okay, you use read read underscore HTML for it. That's it. Okay, so that would that would spare you some frustration, and at the same time, you have a local copy that you could use uh, just directly. Okay, another thing is that sometimes. If you use this Wayback Machine, uh, some of the snapshots, uh, they may be available as links, but you could not access them. And this is this uh, 403 forbidden error. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, this happened when I tried to get an updated version of the, I just tried, you no, know, just for the sake of uh, curiosity to try a more updated version, like February 23. So this is that one, February 23. 
uh, and this this snapshot 1855, uh, at 1855. Okay, and here I get an error. Okay, so what I and the the thing is that this this file is actually a uh, this file this link sorry is actually a dynamic uh it it has elements of a dynamic website so actually it, it takes long uh, see forbidden it takes long to load and because it sort of like regenerates the 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 page in some in some way so sorry there's a chat yeah so so that's the that's the thing about this website it might be very long it might take very long to load and uh and there are issues with using uh web scraping with the web scraping that you see in this chapter uh with with the dynamic website okay so what i did is what i did instead was to download a very very old snapshot instead like from 2000 for july okay that's the one that i uh that i looked for instead okay and you could actually have a look what what it, what, what it looks like okay yeah there yeah this is what it looks like uh in 2004 okay this is what it looks like it's much simpler uh, than before, but yeah, compared to what you see in the screenshot, the screenshot is much, there are much more bells and whistles. Clearly we are in a sharing age uh, here, not, not, not a lot of that. Okay. And, um, and uh, the, if you notice you have images here back then, no images at that time, so it's a very very text heavy uh, website compared to compared to now. Okay. So, so that's the what I try to also show you that although within each within each HTML file, it's possible that you have consistency in the structure. It may be the case that if you use a different snapshot or if you use a different version of the of the page, that the structure might have changed. So that's uh, something to be aware of uh, if you're using uh, this kind of web scraping and you and you automate the processes. This this is something to pay attention to. Okay. So that means that if you're gonna use a very old snapshot. Uh, the code that you see in the book will not work out of the box. And in fact, I have a modification of the of the code here. Uh, I adapted the code that you see in the uh, that you see in the book, and then tried to modify it for this uh, for this particular example. Okay. So, but yeah. So that's the. So that's the uh, that's just the loading part and sort of like the getting a sense of uh, applying these web scraping tools at different points in time, even with respect to the same uh, same target, which is the top two hundred fifty movies. Okay. Now, what I'll do next is to is to go to the to what the book does first, okay? So what the book does first is really, if I combine everything that you see in the book, it's this entire code chunk that that is the core analysis in the book, okay? So let's just read through what, what it does. So what I did was to load the file that was stored locally. Next is to look into what are the tables that are, that are available because they are really tables. Okay, the starting point there is that they look like tables. So there might be an element there that involves tables. So in fact, if you if you right click and look at inspect, you would see this part here. Okay, the highlighted part here has a table. It's a table element. Okay, and you could do the same for the other one. Okay. So, sorry. 
So there's a table element that you have to sort of like point to and then and then automatically convert it into an H automatic con convert it into, into a exploit the table format and then and then use it as the as your table. Okay. So let me just uh show you how this works. Okay. So let me just uh, do this. Okay. So if you look at table.book, you get this table. Okay. You have a lot of this extra stuff uh, that you see here. And in fact, if you look at HTML, if you look at HTML.book only, you just see this HTML doc document and then you have uh, in it, uh these two entries okay and then you do processing through this html element okay so you could take a look what it does okay so if you look at just this part okay it picks up the part that involves these tables okay and then the the table has a structure that is an html table Okay, and the command HTML underscore table automatically exploits that structure to create a, a, a table out of it. Okay. So that's that's essentially what uh what you see here. Okay. Okay. Now uh definitely you have to clean this uh data set up. Okay, you have to clean this data set up. And uh what they do is to is to start first with choosing the relevant columns, which is here, the rank and the title, and then the IMDB rating. Those are the two columns that they want to focus on. And that's what they do here, okay? And conveniently rename them, okay? Because uh, the, the column name, okay? has spaces in them and has this special these special characters. So it might be annoying to work with them. So also when there's a space in the column name, you have to put these uh, two acts. Uh, I, I don't know what they're called, but uh, they're not single quotes, but these um, accents of sorts, okay? Sure that, uh, because if you don't have, if you don't have these two things here, uh, the, the white space, there will be an error because of this white space that you see here. So that's the thing. Okay. So they renamed them into something more, into names that are more convenient. So you have rank title year and then rating, okay? Uh, they use rank title year because the rank and title, the rank and title contains the rank, the title, and the year, okay? Okay. So, so if you want to see what this looks like, it's not going to be surprising that it will, sorry, I have to load tidyverse. Oops. There. And then now it looks a bit better. Okay. You now have these two columns. One is the rank title year, which is a string that has the, the name, the rank, Oh, sorry, the rank, the name of the movie, and then the um, the year in which it was uh, released. And then you have a, another column that has the ratings. Okay, And for ratings, it was automatically recognized as a double. Okay, there. And then the next part is to create the separate rank, title, and year uh, columns. And um, here, they need to do a lot of cleaning for this part. Like, for instance, this... This new line here, you have to get rid of that. Okay, you have to get rid of that, and then, and then once you, yeah, yeah. So you have to get rid of that, and then afterwards we're gonna we're gonna separate them. Okay, so that's the that's the idea. Okay, so this part is to get rid of all of these uh backslash ends okay and then afterwards we're gonna separate them based on a particular pattern okay so the pattern is that i want to create three separate columns where i have the rank okay the title and the year and 
the what you see here are the regex for the regex that you have to use. So for example, for this one, for rank, you need the digits, okay? You need the digits and uh, everything after that, okay? Uh, yeah, everything after that and then end with the period. The other one is to, uh, for the title, okay? You need to make sure that, you need to make sure that it only picks up everything that until the end of the name of the title, okay? And the year part, you have to get rid of that, uh, get rid of that thing, okay? So, yeah. So, let me let me show you that. Okay. So this part is okay. Okay. For the moment, you could ignore this one. Okay. I just put them all together. Okay. So I'll just do until mutate, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Oops, sorry. Let me, there. See, so the rank title year has this uh, kind of format after you removed all the slash backslash n, okay, which is what you, what was done here to after you replaced all of this uh, backslash n and everything afterwards, okay, as long as it has that kind of form you replace it with uh with a space okay that's essentially what what happened here okay okay and then uh you're going to do separate wider regex uh for this rank title year and make sure that the rank has only this number 1 and then this part for the title and then this part uh for the year okay Yeah, I think that those are the more uh, those are the more important uh, parts of the of the code. Okay, and once you have that, okay, once you have that, you'll get a final version. Let me just run everything here. Oops. So you'll have ratings dot book, and now it's separated into rank title and year okay? okay along with the rating uh the last part here the number here is really the number of uh the number of votes uh that went into creating the rating okay so that one uh that one has the you have to extract uh that part separately you have to extract that part separately let me see the chat okay so so that's the sort of like the idea behind uh, how to do this uh, web scraping thing in this uh, example. And it really uses, it exploits the structure of the, of the HTML file. And you definitely have to use a lot of the things from chapter 15, okay, to do the, to do the work. And, um, and this might involve a lot of trial and error here and there, okay. Okay. And the other, the other relatively comp, not complicated, but the other thing about uh, about the about the ratings HTML file for that is used in the book is that it has this part here where you essentially extract the number of um, the number of votes that went into the rating, okay? And if you really want to look for this, you have to look at the, the HTML file directly and then look for the right place where you could find it, okay? And then find the selector that you need so that you would be able to target it using HTML elements. That's, that's essentially the idea, the idea for this part, okay? Um, one reason why I haven't really, sh ah, maybe I, I should show you scrape page. Okay. okay. So you see, if I open it, if you notice, it takes a while to load. In fact, if you look at the bottom, it's still looking up the archive.org web page. Okay. 
even though I saved the file uh, locally. So to display it in the browser takes a bit more, okay? See, it's taking a, a bit longer time to, to generate. Yeah. Sorry, mm. for that. I have a question. Mm. Probably silly. Okay, because I know last time we talked about like um JSON and how that's JavaScript. What mm. is the difference between like I guess they're different languages, but like HTML and JavaScript, like what's yeah. the difference for how they're used? I guess they're yeah, it, the syntax alone is different, right? The tags that they use are are different. So if you look at so that's what we did in chapter 23 uh, for JSON, okay? The, the text file that you have has a different kind of format and it has, uh, it's storing things in a different way. So for HTML, it's mainly, at least my impression is that it's mainly for viewing, right? It's mainly for viewing on a browser. So you tag things in a very particular way so that it would be displayed in a in a particular way. So if you have like this href, uh, the one that has let me let me show you that. Here it does it have an href? Let me see. No, I don't think here they have an href here. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah. So here. Uh, let me look. Let me just there. So, for example, this uh, this first part here for the Godfather. Okay, there's a link. So it was it was displayed in this form because there's a tag called a, and then there's an attribute called href that links it to whatever. Uh, the 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 page for the Godfather, the cached page for the Godfather, yeah. So, the the point of the HTML is to have a document that is in text form that when you put it into a browser, it the browser sort of like renders it in a way that would be understandable for us. Um, for for JSON, the to me, at least my impression is that JSON is more of a storing storage kind of thing. So you, it was important to know uh, whether you have a string, a number, a boolean, an array. You know, th those are more important than uh, if you compare it with HTML. I hope that uh, answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There. So, uh, let me see. Yeah, see, it took a while before this this page loaded. You know? So that's the that's the difference between uh this file that I just loaded and the file that I loaded, the more recent version of the file. Okay. And if you if I do inspect, you see, it's a very complicated uh it's a very compl complicated HTML file. And you really have to dig deep to find, um, dig deep to find out this particular element here that will give you the number of uh, the number of rate the number of people who gave ratings to produce the final rating that you see uh, on IMDb. Okay, so you really have to dig deep into into the code to be able to look to look for it because here it's not very obvious on the surface where the number of uh, ratings are. Okay, you Compare that with this one from 2004 where the votes are here. Okay. So that, that makes, so th there are two challenges now, like for, for the new version, you have to dig deeper into a more to a denser HTML file. This one is a bit easier on the eyes no? and easier to find where things could be, okay? Uh, but it also has its own uh, difficulties, which I'll point out a bit later, okay? So there, those are the things that I, 
you know just as a broad view of uh what's happening in the in this chapter and what kind of skills are needed to be able to fully exploit uh web scraping my my suggestion is to really dig into these html files for yourself and get a sense of which parts are which like from scratch uh then once you are comfortable with that you could use this selector gadget to to do to to help you out as well but for me i i haven't used that yet you know so i i just dig into the html file and then look for things that i wanted uh directly okay um yeah so in the in the notes that i gave out uh you'll see the titles of the book of of the of the movies okay there Okay, there are 250 of them. Okay, there are, so if, and I could also do the, a similar analysis for the old version of the website. Okay, so let me just do that. Okay, and then let me just show you the, the titles. Okay, and I think I might also have it here. Yeah, I also have it here. So this, this list is based on the book, okay? The most recent version, the, the, the version that was more recent and you see it in the book. And then the other one is based on my, on the 2004 version of, of the IMDb two, top 250 movies. Okay. And if you already would see a problem if you want to combine the two data sets together and show what movies sort of like went into the, uh, what movies are new that went into the rankings and then what uh, movies got in the old times are sort of like fell off, okay? Fell off the rankings. Okay? Or you could also look into how rankings have changed over time. That might be interesting as, as well, okay? So... Things become more complicated in those uh, settings. For for one thing, in the old uh, version, the Godfather is written as Godfather comma the. Okay, so you could already see it here, Godfather comma the, and then here it's the Godfather. So that's that would take some some more uh, post processing to be able to if you want to combine these two data sets together through this title. Okay. As, a, as your key, if, if you wish. Okay. Another thing to point out is this, for example, this example here, uh, Shichini no Samurai. Okay. I think this is seven Samurai. If I, yeah, my feeling is that this is seven Samurai. And um, I think here you should see it because it's still a good movie after all these years. Yes, it's here. Yeah. Seven Samurai is there. Okay. And it changed the it was translated into into english okay the the title okay so that's one thing to one other thing to notice another thing to notice is uh this one even the even the foreign titles that have the in them or the equivalent in in the in the foreign language uh is um is styled in a different way so uh, il buono il bruto il cattivo this is, I think, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, so that that movie should still be in the top two hundred and fifty, as far as I could see. You know, and uh, yeah, so those are a couple of things to 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 notice that, like like das Boot, yeah, and then I think the new things here are really. Uh, yeah, like yeah, you, you have uh Chinese movies like this this one from John Wu. Okay. And uh yeah. This one is I think new new. Yeah, this is new. It's from from Pedro Almodovar, I think. Yeah. There. So those are some of the so there are new movies that came into the list uh not not seen before. Okay, so those are the things to point to think about. 
so the question there's a question do you think it's better or worse to, than using python to scrape sorry I, I i don't know the answer to that question because i i've never used python at all so someone else should answer that question in case you know yeah no 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 problem yeah no problem at all there so I tried doing the joining using things you learned from the, from the join chapter. And Schindler's list is, uh, here you could see the sort of like the change in the, ra the ranking from rank five. Uh, yeah, I think this is from rank five to rank six. So it fell down the charts. Uh, Casablanca also fell down quite a lot. Okay, But if you notice, the godfather doesn't have a corresponding rank because the the Godfather and Godfather, comma the were not recognized as the same uh, movie. So this one would take some work to be able to uh, to get to get to the point where you have uh, so you have to worry about that part, and you also have to worry about the translated versions of the of the movies to be able to have this uh, this comparison of the rankings over time over two points in time. And which, and if you want to answer which movie, uh, which movies are new that went into the charts, or which movies who which were there even in two thousand four, but was not in the two thousand four list, but nevertheless made it to two thousand twenty two. Those kinds of questions take more work uh, to do, but this is sort of like a start. Okay, and then uh, I think. There's a not because there's not a lot of exercises. I just tried doing one that is uh I tried to look for something that ha that respects the respects the section 24.2 about the ethical implications of web scraping. And I stumbled upon a site that might be of independent interest. And this is a, a zine club. So it's actually quite fun. So this is a quarantine zine club. Basically, someone uh, accumulated all of the, well, not all, but a lot of the zine, independent zines and uh, put them in, as a list. So in contrast to what you see from IMDB Top 250, although you both see sort of like a listing, the formatting is different. Uh, here you have a table. Okay, here you also have a table, but here it's not a table. Okay, so it takes more work to put this into a data frame, okay, because you don't have the convenient HTML underscore table. Yeah. Yeah. So Ken has some a response for uh for for the Python thing. For for me, I couldn't really answer that question. Yeah. There. So so here for the quarantine zine club, uh, I set out to because I I, I like reading these uh, these zines. So what I want is a convenient spreadsheet where I could just have the author, the title of the zine, and then a link to download the PDF file for the for the zine. And then here I just use the first social media link because it's actually a bit more complicated to to put all of their social media links into one place. Uh, with, with the knowledge of the chapter alone, I, I wasn't able to do all of it. Yeah. There. Um, yeah. So here, let me just show you this zine library, what it kind of looks like beneath. Okay. So let me put this up. So if you look at the, so this part, if you if you look at the highlight, it highlights the entire that entire content part, and here you would see div class row, and this would be this particular part for this particular zine spooks. Okay, there, that's the one that is highlighted. There, so that part. So for spooks, and then if you look at column left, column left is the image of the zine. And then here, column right is the part that I'm interested in, which is uh, 
the link to the zine, okay? And then I, I'm not really interested, uh, I'm not really interested in the description, but I could have put this into the file, but I I think I read these zines indiscriminately. So, so I, this text didn't matter to me. And then you have uh, the author name, or at least the, uh, the handle, if you wish, for that author, and then their socials, okay? So some have two socials, but some have like five socials like this this guy here, okay? So this takes more to work on uh, if you want to get all of the socials. So what I did was to just get off the first social, whatever that social link is, okay? And then the rest I ignored, okay? So, uh, but e effectively the idea is to extract, to focus on this part column right, okay, that part, and then extract the things that I that I want, and then form the spreadsheet, okay. And what I did here, what I did here was a bit, a bit more, a bit different than I just described, in the sense that for some of the, for example, for looking at the names of the authors, it was easy to find them because you could. It's here, here, you would see that it has a tag P and then the ID is Z name, okay? And the content is, sorry, the attribute is Z name and is ID and then you have this Z name and then you have uh, Billy's Zine, okay? Which is the name of the, the author in this situation. So, so I could target Z name directly and then recover the author's uh, names directly. Okay, so that's what I what I did here. Okay, so from the HTML file here, I didn't have a problem loading the the URL, not at all. Okay, this is really just plain text. Okay, really plain text. So I start from the HTML file, targeted this Z name, which is an which is an attribute, and you have to put hashtag, the pound sign, and then Z name. Uh, and you could see it from here as well. So if you notice, when I highlighted this part and put my cursor here, you would see on the browser, you have P pound Z name. So that's pound Z name is the one that you need, okay? And that's what you, that's what I do here and then get the text file that is associated with that Z name, okay? I could do the same for the titles, okay? That's what I did here. For the titles, it's in library header, this one there, library header, okay? And it has a, and it has this href to the, the hyperlink to the PDF file, okay? The hyperlink to the PDF file. So that's what I wanted to, to get from, from this uh, PDF link, okay? So the new thing here really is that I needed to be a bit more discriminating about where I want to look for the hyperlinks because the whole website is full of hyperlinks. Like you have a hyperlink for about zine library, zinesters and so on. But I, what I want is the hyperlinks that are in this, in this class called div class column right, that part only. So all of those column right uh portions i want the hyperlinks from there so that's why i didn't so if you had you remove this part then it will indiscriminately get all of those uh hyperlinks so what i did was to focus on on only the div divs that have class equal to column right and here you might have to use what is called xpath and you might wonder where to get that you could actually get that directly here. So when you right click this, you have copy and then you have XPath. Okay. So that's the one that you could use to, uh, to you as an alternative for targeting the thing that you want to, to scrape. Okay. So that's the underlying idea uh, for this part. So focus on the column right divs and then extract the those A's 
which would lead to a hyper ref. So this A, I think, means anchor, if I'm not mistaken. So you have this A, and then you have H ref, because I want the uh the hyperlinks, uh the high the, the associated hyperlinks. Okay. And then and then I have to do some, and then I included this part here because I needed to get the socials. Okay. That getting the socials is much more difficult to do. Okay. Uh, but they have a pattern. Okay. So I want the first social only. Okay. So the first social that comes out. So it, I need to look for it here in the code. This one is the first social. So if you if you put your cursor in, on it, you would see that it will target that part. Okay. And you will have the first social there, Instagram.com slash Belize Zine. Okay. And uh, how do I get that part, that first tag? I could copy and then look for XPath. Okay. If I do that, the XPath, sorry, let me show you what it looks like. So the X path looks like this, okay? That's the first uh, social, okay? That's the first social for the first zine that is in the list, okay? I could also go to the next zine to get a sense of what's the pattern for the next uh, social, okay? So the next social is this, okay? I want the column right, and then I want the first Instagram, uh, the first uh, social that's that's there, which in, happens to be Instagram as well, okay? And I could copy the X path for that. And you would notice that everything looks the same except for two and three here. So presumably, uh, if I go, if I go to the next one, div four, if this were four, then that would be predictably would be this one for Riley Gunderson. Okay. So in fact, you could have a look. So for Riley Gunderson, this one, this is the social. It's not Instagram anymore, but a website. Okay. Copy the X path. Yeah. See, it's the four. So that means that I could sort of like get all of the socials by uh by looping through two up to the very end okay and i have to look for the very end okay let me see the chat yeah there so i think i think that's the sort of like the idea the idea for this uh for this part sorry so I created uh two to one fifty six because one fifty six is the last uh the last uh zine the last zines it starts from two and then one fifty six and then I create a function that will create the uh the relevant x path and go through div two div three until div one fifty six okay and then uh recover that social uh the first social from there. Okay, so that's I I don't have time to do the rest now. But uh, the other thing that I had to do was to get the PDF links, make sure to paste sort of like the top level website, which is the name of the website. Because if you look at the if you look at the if you try just running this first part and looking at the column for PDF links, you would notice that the PDF links are like this. You have zine library slash blah, 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 dot PDF. So it's not the full path. It's only a, a relative path. So I had to paste the first part so that in, if I have a spreadsheet, I just click that's, that particular row and then it will open a website, something to that effect. Okay. I I don't think I'll have time to do a lot, a lot more aside from that. So hopefully that uh, entices you to uh, read more about the chapter, uh, learn more about it. And uh, if you have comments on the code, let me know, because this is really just trial, like trial and error along the way. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah.